And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and please subscribe to the channel. So today, I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Alunga Makabu versus Tabiso Mashunu this Saturday. I'm not sure where you'll be able to watch it. It hasn't been announced yet, but hopefully someone in the UK is able to pick it up. I'm not sure about the US either, but this is one of the most excited I've been to do a Punch Perfect prediction video. I really, really like this fight. Obviously, it's a rematch, and I think the reason I'm looking forward to it so much is before i get into this if you've not seen their first fight please go back and watch it because you know even better i'll leave a link down below so you are able to watch it but it's one of the best cruiserweight fights i've seen which is a massive statement because although it's not a rich division historically there have been many great fights especially recently and this is one of the best of them a real back and forth affair and one that kind of ended dramatically really so really looking forward to this rematch and it's a fight where i'm completely torn but I'm going to give my prediction anyway. So we'll start off with the challenger, Tabiso Machuno. Now, this is a guy that really doesn't get the credit he deserves. Um, you know, firstly, for me, before Alexander Usyk emerged into this division, he was, for me, the best technical boxer. And I think, you know, you could still argue that right now, he maybe still is the best technical boxer in the division. I think Maris Bradis is more well-rounded. Obviously, I think Lawrence Acoli is probably the most dangerous. But just in terms of technical ability... I think he's right up there and for me just boxes out of the shoulder roll and um, he's a southpaw both of these guys are southpaw good jab good combination punches fast hands great shot selection good defense but for me there's a couple of obviously um flaws for the reasons that he hasn't reached the quite the top and won a world title yet he can be hurt he hasn't got the world's best chin um his engine is also questionable he tends to fade off a little bit late in fights and the other thing for me is probably the footwork. Um, he's a little bit flat-footed. And I felt if he was lighter on his feet, quicker on his feet, like a Usyk or someone like that, we'd be looking at one of the best fighters in the world. But he does have his flaws, but he also has some really good, really good um, functions in his skill set. And you know, for me, when you look at an elite fighter, they have very minimal flaws. I think the thing for Mashuno is he has some elite level parts of his game but he has some glaring flaws that bring him down from being an elite fighter whereas when you look at an elite fighter like a Usyk, a Canelo or Crawford those flaws are minimal they're like some of them there aren't even flaws so yeah for me that's what stopped him from getting to that top level just those flaws the chin and the engine sometimes belief as well I felt like after the first Makabu fight he tailed off a little bit and the belief sort of lacked and lacked a bit, but he's now getting back on top of his game and we'll talk a little bit about that. Moving over to Makabu, the champion, one of the most improved fighters in the sport, in all honesty. You know, since the Tony Bellew defeat, I feel like he's really improved and gone up through the levels and we'll look at some of those wins as we get deeper into this video. One of the hardest hitters in the sport with an 83% KO ratio. Again, southpaw, but more of a front foot fighter than Machunu. He likes to impose his strength, his power. He's a good body puncher. Um, got a great chin. I know we've seen him hurt in the past, but he recovers really well. He's a bit of a workhorse. Just grinds you down. Big swarm in left hands. Um, weaknesses, he can be outboxed. You can hurt him, but you have to put him out of there like Tony Bell you did in order to get rid of him. So, again, not the most layered technician in the world. He is beatable, but if you're going to go in there for 12 rounds, you need to be prepared to, to go to war and go through hell. I'll start off by talking about their first fight before I get into where those guys have kind of gone since that first fight and where they're at now heading into this weekend. Their first fight, Machunu started like a house on fire. He was piercing up Makabu. He had the speed advantage, the ability advantage. Um, his power is something that isn't spectacular, but he was able to hurt Makabu in the third round, really lighting him up with combinations and had him all over the place. Built up a big lead on the card, but that early success was perhaps his downfall as he started to tire as the fight went on, which is obviously made worse by Makabu banging away at that body, banging away at the arms, just hitting him with hard clubbing shots, and eventually he broke him down. And when it got to round 11, Machunu was up on two of the cards with one even, so he was ahead going into the penultimate round, but Makabu got the job done with a cracking left uppercut um, and got the victory. So... It felt like it was a fight that really could have gone either way, but Makabu's just durability, his power, his strength told down the stretch. But early on, Machunu had his way, so that's what makes it interesting for me. Since that fight, as I mentioned, Makabu has been really impressive. He went on to lose against Tony Bellew, but he's seriously improved since. Look at some of those wins. 
Kudrashov um, of Russia, again, one of the hardest punchers in the sport at the time. They both had a 90% KO ratio, so it was a real battle of the hard hitters. Um, Kudrashov hit him early and was able to hurt Makabu, but he recovered and went on to just beat him up. Um, Alexei Papin, um, Mikhail Seslak, who we know is going to be fighting Lawrence Okoli in the near future at the end of February. Um, he's had some brilliant wins since then. He's really improved. Um, Duradola as well, who we saw get knocked out by Riakpol recently. He's gone on a really good one, run and he's built up a lot of confidence. He's improved. We thought that maybe the Bellew knockout would see him decline and he was never quite as good as we thought. But he's actually gone on to prove that it was a really good win for Tony Bellew, which hurts me to say. He's reset. He's continued to sort of refine his game. He's found his best form and he's just sort of continued to get better, really. Whereas... For Machunu, it wasn't that simple. He went through a, a phase where he went 3-3 three and three in his next six fight, including a defeat to Usyk. For me, it's one of Usyk's best victories. It really goes under the radar. I don't think you'd put it in the top five now that he's got a Joshua on there, Gassiev on there, Bradus on there, um, a Michael Hunter on there, Glowacki on there, Bellew on there. But he's in and around that conversation, and it was a great win for him and one of his most underrated. And he went 3-3 three and three in his next six fights, and... It kind of felt like that the Makabu feet had got the better of him. He was never going to be the same. But after that 3-3, three and three, he found a bit of form. He got a win over Thomas Oosterhausen. Their first fight was controversial. He got a win over him in the rematch. Then thought uh, a kind of worse version of Denis Lebedev, but got the win there. And his most recent victory against Evgeny Tyshenko is a fight that perhaps during that slump he would have lost. But we saw him go the distance, look good over the distance in a 12-round performance, and show some improvements once again. So this is really interesting. I think both of them are going into this at a really good stage. And something we need to consider here is that Canelo Alvarez outlined Makabu as a potential next opponent to create a bit of history. For both men, this could be the most important fight of their careers in terms of a payday, in terms of a financial opportunity. Um, Alunga Makabu is... If he wins, I feel like he's more likely to get the shot. But for Machunu, he'll be thinking, if I win this, I'm a step away from, you know, financial freedom. I'll be I'll be able to, to live 10 lifetimes, you know. It'll be a really big opportunity for him. And for Makabu, he won't want to, don't want to fumble that bag, as Jake Paul would say. So he'll be needing to win this fight. So, so much going into it. Obviously, Machunu wants his revenge as well. And you can just tell if you follow him on Instagram, the way he's spoken about Makabu over the last couple of years. Revenge is on his mind and he wants it badly. So going into my prediction now, really tough fight. I'm finding it hard to pick a winner. I feel like we could see a repeat of the first fight, in all honesty. I think Tavisa Machunu is the better operator, the more skilled. Um, I feel like it would be a bit of a travesty, really, if he didn't win this fight. Um, because he's one of those fighters that when they retire, you'll be like, God, with his ability, he should have won a world title. Especially in the cruiserweight division, where he's fought in two periods of the cruiserweight division, where they were a little bit lacklustre. They went through that period where Usyk and Bradis and Gassiev and Dortikus came along. But it has either side of that period been not the greatest and he could have had an option to win a world title so it would be a shame if he didn't I'm really rooting for him here because I feel like he deserves more credit he deserves to be more respected he's got the better skill set better ability faster hands um, all the tools you you could have to to dominate a six round fight however this is 12 rounds and we saw last time that the intangibles of Makabu is ultimately what gets the job done at a tough division like cruiserweight and obviously heavyweight as well the just the efficiency the power the physical presence the work rate there is a lot of concerns here for me with machunu with his chin and his durability every fiber of my being wants to pick machunu to cause an upset here and if he did it wouldn't be shocking at all but i just feel like perhaps makabu don king promoting this with the canelo fight one win away I just feel like perhaps he gets to him late on once again, slightly earlier than last time, as I think Makabu has improved. And I think Machunu is obviously a little bit more miles on the clock there. And I think he might overcompensate early on now that he's really felt that power. So I'm going to go for Alunga Makabu in the second half of the fight. I'm going to go for a round eight stoppage. However, Machunu on points is my backup to that. 
And if it happens, don't be surprised because we have a really good fighter on our hands. And this is a great fight, so definitely tune in if you're able to watch it. Go back and watch the first fight. I'll leave a link down below. Hope you enjoyed my breakdown. Comment your prediction down below. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.